go. Boom. There we go. Now I'm in the studio. Oh, I love it. Still walk around. How many hey. how many hours a day would you say you're in there? Oh wow, look at that. Oh, I'm in here from nine or eight thirty till six every day. Wow, that lime is amazing. So it's kind of like that lemon one I did years yeah, ago. I remember that. But this one's holding a Corona bottle. And it's gonna say Crayola instead of Corona. <laughs> it's say enjoy Crayola instead. Uh, yeah. Dude, that's, that's, that's amazing. Cool. That's so cool. Yeah, that one's, that one's fun. How is, uh, how is uh, the quarantine going for you? It's good. I mean, not much changes. I'm still doing the same amount of work. You know, I'm in here every day like I was before. Having a homeschool on top of being like, oh. you know, it's tough. So The teachers but, we all used to talk crap about, we now salute. Right, right. You know? um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's special. Crazy. It's super crazy. But it's also kind of fun. Like my my little guy. What was that? What was that? What was that? I think you better. Uh, there you go. I think the computer joined now too. Oh no way! <laughs> I think but so. I still I don't think there's yeah because look there's a screen maybe but the there's something still wrong with the video. You know what? I'm just gonna just turn leave it. it. Yeah, just yeah. We're just gonna keep it as is. Yeah, just leave it. <laughs> Shut down. Computer. I officially know we all know nothing about computers. <laughs> I know. Like I was going to say, I was going to get my seven-year-old in here because he's rocking this thing all day. Yesterday, he taught his first art class. Like, no I've been way. I've been teaching him one-point perspective because he's really into like putting dimensions on things. Uh -huh. so I'm like, okay, you're good at that, but what if we put a vanishing point over here and then you watch where you do all the lines and draw your parallel lines. Right. And we've been sharing a sketchbook throughout this quarantine and making comics and having these little drawing battle games. And so he's getting really good at it. I'm like, dude, why don't you, uh, why don't you teach your friends on Zoom? Do a little class. And I made them this little ad that said, yeah. "Art with Everett" or "Drawing with Everett." Nice. And so he taught his friends how to do one point perspective and turn the first letter of their name into characters. Yesterday, That's so cool. it was pretty rad. Man. That kind of stuff, that kind of stuff has been fun because he's been drawing a lot during this whole thing. Oh, I got hit leave meeting. There it is. Boom. Boom. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Evil computers. Um, Greg, so what's up, man? We got Greg Simpkins here, a.k.a. Crayola. This is uh, really, really cool. Um, I've been a huge fan of Greg's for as long as I can oh, remember, and he's been a friend for a long time, and it's been super cool. Um, let's, uh, let's give a little bit of background for, for the kids listening. Some people may know who you are. Some people may not. Um, where are you from? Okay, um, I'm from Torrance, California, which to uh, people say, where the hell's Torrance? It's, <laughs> it's in the South Bay of LA County, and the part I'm from, it butts up right against Redondo Beach and Palos Verdes, right in that little, little nugget right there where it stays cloudy all June. You yeah, got it the, does. the May gray, and <laughs> then it's, uh, we got a little beach right there which I'm at probably every single day in the morning and nice little town. I've lived in the South Bay my whole life in different parts of it. Um, from the East side of East Torrance Harbor area to down to beach El Segundo, but I always come back here, South Torrance. Wow. Have you, um, has art always been like a thing for you since you were a kid or like, did it just, did it come at some point of your, like an age? I, I, it's always been there. It is the thing I did. It was, like, I remember I went to preschool. My mom dropped me off at preschool for the first day, and they put up such a fuss. She took me home and said, you're not doing that. And she just rolled out butcher paper on a picnic table and threw right. crayons down on it. And I haven't put crayons down ever since. Wow. So I had it been four, you know, three, four, five, whatever it is. And it just it was always my way of entertaining myself. That's so amazing. I don't know. I don't know life not drawing. They yeah. weren't good either. It's not, I mean, I look back, I have a lot of my old drawings, like, man, this was shit. I can't believe anybody thought I had anything, you know. <laughs> oh, that's cool. But I was so obsessed stuff. with it. Like, that's all I did to entertain myself. So I, I, I still do. I should be sketching right now because I get nervous hands. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Do you do that in meetings and on the phone and stuff? Just kind of do a lot. That's yeah. the best. Oh, yeah. Some of the best work. 
I, totally. Like so many, like I need books full of that kind of stuff. That's so, so. cool. Um, when did you get into graffiti? Like when, when did that like uh, a part of your life begin? Like that, I, I, everybody said, like, I'll say it, I pronounce, I got into graffiti later in life. Like I was like 17 when okay. I re- when at first, like, oh, I can do this. I was eight. I was 17 when I started. I was 18 when I took the name Crayola. What, and, uh, what made you start graffiti? Like what did you, what like triggered yeah, what you, you like where you're like, oh shit, I want to do that. Did you see a peace book at school or something? It was kids. It was guys at school and I, I'd seen it on the freeway and stuff like that. But like, it was definitely kids in school who saw me drawing. I was in the back of the class drawing in my sketchbook. I was really introverted. You know, I kept to myself, but mm-hmm. these two skater dudes saw my, my drawings like, oh my gosh, those are, those are rad. I'm like, oh, thanks, you know, like check this book out. And it was Subway Art. And I was like, oh shit, I gotta go. I immediately went, yeah, I bought that book like that weekend. And I was just like, oh my gosh, flipping through all the pages and just taken back by everything I saw from the characters, the big, you know, bright colors, you know, like Scene and mm-hmm. Gandhi and all those yeah, guys. Absolutely. And I'm just like, holy shit, this is what I want to do. And I went and grabbed a spray can out of my dad's garage and then started it up, you know? Like wow. I I had friends from like a youth group I was in that were writers and there's all skaters, all the skaters. Of course, everyone was a skater. And then it, it, it came to most, to be, you became a writer or at least right. gave it a that try was- to see if you could be any good at it. Right. And I would go to all the skate spots with all these guys and <laughs> I wasn't really good. So I was good at drawing, so I catching tags and drawing in books and drawing on people's boards and just going from spot to spot. We meet other guys and they're like, oh, that guy's a graffiti writer too. I'm like, no way. So you just start meeting people and collecting friends and going on missions and, and daring each other to do, you know, gnarlier stuff and hit right. weirder spots. So it, it just kind of snowballed. It, it was so a lot cool. of fun. I mean, I still, I still get out and paint a little bit here and there, try to get a couple good pieces in a, a right. year. But, you know, how did how did you how did the name Crayola come about? Gosh, man, I have so many weird ways <laughs> I make up about it, like online and stuff. But seriously, it's just sitting with my friends. I used to write Crum, C-R-U-M. Mm-hmm. And I had lots of good freeway spots with it. Like It was like I was going to run with it and just sitting in my buddy's in my buddy's room or drawing with markers and black books. And we were probably high. I don't know. Yeah, I was using like a dead Crayola marker and it was like, it wasn't really working really great, but I just remember looking at it and just going, oh yeah, Crayola, but without the Y because it's too yeah. long. That's Dude, too it's so good. Yeah, it's even cute. Chrome is, even Chrome is a good name, man. Chrome, yeah, I like that. Yeah, like, I like Crumb for a while, but everybody said it sounded too much like Chrome and there's yeah. a writer Chrome. There so was, I was like, yeah. that because when you say it, it sounds like chrome and when somebody hits you up says what do you write i'm not gonna say chrome and i'm like somebody writes that you know well, you know it's yeah. funny is uh when i was a kid when i first started uh graffiti uh or like a, a t- it grabbed my eye i was in middle school and i wrote like the worst name ever it stood for absolutely nothing it was uh inco and okay. i and I, it was a four letter word, a four letter name. And, you know, Aaron from Agenda, uh, yeah. you know, we, we grew up together. So we went to middle school and high school and, you know, we're obviously, you know, we're best friends, but uh, we like, I, I remember getting into high school and this kid came up to me. He's like, yo man, I heard you write so-and-so. I was like, yeah. And I was like, you know, you're 14 years old. You have no idea what's going on. And um, this dude, this dude's like, there's, a, there's one, there's an anchor from UTI, you know, and like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, but you're so like young and so scared. Like, you're like, yeah, like, okay, I won't write that name ever again. And like, there's there was no chance in hell. There, like, the internet was just barely like starting. You know, like, there's no chance in in the world this person was gonna know. Oh, like, tag that he saw right. Was, hey, I Do you remember tag. being? I remember being so stoked, like going on art crimes and finding my name on there, and then <laughs> yeah. all my crew of kids. I was like, how do they know all this stuff? Yeah. We got in so trouble crazy. over here once when I was young. I had a crew that I had started called HDK and uh-huh. our friend AK, so it was HDJK or whatever. Yeah. Happy days. And we, uh, one of the kids got caught by the cops over here and he gave my name up as the leader. No he just gave my first name. And I was like, you dick. So like, I, did, I immediately stopped writing in this neighborhood. Uh, but I was just like, dude, the fact that anybody could just 
find out who you are. And even back then, I think it was like around 94, 95, our crime started kicking off, right? Yeah, yeah. And look, sure. came up and it's funny, like, whoa, people are tracking this shit. Yeah, came it, from it, a was, it was crazy. Yeah, so that was, yeah, was kind of gnarly. Um, but they never caught me. That's bad, <laughs> but they never got me. Um, and, and, and you could say pass, but like, how did, um, how did like a, how did you get down with like the CBS guys or, you know, even WAI? Like how, how was that? Like, was that, in, was that right away or was that a few years down the road of you starting the graffiti world? That was years down the road. I, like, like I said, I'd started that crew HD with my buddy, Justin, mm -hmm. and then we just, he wrote duet. And then we used to just like all, put all our skater friends in. They can even write some of them. Yeah. Like, let's go pick them. I used to take them up. Yeah. Right. I take them up on the freeway. We just go up the on ramp onto the 110 freeway and just run down, hit spots. We'd skate up and down Western or Normandy and hit spots. And just like I got them all hyped on it. And then I started taking a couple of kids that had some artistic talent to go do pieces and go do throw ups and stuff. And that was a lot of fun. And through doing that, um, I met some guys at El Camino College from this crew dynamics and this guy Tron and my buddy Capsule, who was this, this dude, Brad Hess was a guy I looked up to since like first grade. And he was like a amateur skater in the neighborhood and stuff. So everybody looked up to this guy. They took me under the wing and they taught me a bunch of stuff. And they were friends with my buddy Circus. And you know, Circus from yeah. Shapeshifters, he's from CBS. Yeah. And I met him at a church thing in like 1993. And he saw I had a black book and he's like, oh, let me hit that. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then he did the CBS in it. And I was like, oh, I seen that up on the freeway. Oh, you're, you're that guy. He had this spot that was like a landmark on the 110 and off of Figueroa. And I had seen it so many times. I'm like, oh, you're that circus. And he's like, yeah, let me get your number. And I just started hanging out with him. And I'd go to his house, which wasn't that far from mine. He grew up yeah. in Torrance. So. And so I just started hanging out with Circus in 93 and he took me to my first CBS meeting. And at that point I met, you know, the whole crowd pictures from that day, like Bleak was there, Gas, Epic, Box, Exist, Anger, um, was NATO? I don't think NATO was there yet. And I met all these dudes. I was looking through Epic's black book. I was like, oh shit, I can't even, I can't even hang with these dudes. <laughs> I'm like, I suck. And I just kind of, I kind of just shied away. I backed off and I went and just worked on my own stuff. And I, and I got down with this crew SCI out here. My buddy uh, Dave started at El Camino College and we started painting a lot. And just, I think that's when I started perfecting, you know, my skills with the spray can and all that stuff. And we put my buddy Castle in the crew. He used to write dark, but you know Castle is. From yeah, the, I do. Yeah. K, it's K-A-S-L, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and he became my 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 dude we're the, we just started going everywhere we went to yard together for the first time we used to kill venice we used to do all the yard spots and it was through painting with castle that we met nato and nato is from wilmington which is straight down the way from us over here and he's like hey man you need to come kick it and paint with me i'm like all right and immediately we went and hopped some wall into some yard spot in wilmington over behind banning yeah and did my first legit production like we've done doing no it's not my first legit production we had some others but with nato the way he did it he was so planned and precise yeah whether it's legal or illegal he's like we're going to do it this way and just follow my lead i'm like all right even from like getting into the spot and leaving the spot cleaning up the spot he broke it down completely that dude taught me so much it was it was so cool super fun painting with him around that time i met pleck also so i always get it wow. jumbled uh, I met Pleck. I, Pleck to me, like growing up, was someone I I really admired. Man, like he, the, it, it was such a cool West Coast style. You know, yeah. um, it was really cool. Like I I loved NATO stuff growing up. Um, he he stood out to me a lot. Um, obviously you did. Uh, Access, you know, is besides yeah. Access being like a, a super close friend. Like he's yeah. one guy in CBS to me that always was like, no one can do better characters than this man. You know, I agree. Axis is by far my biggest mentor and the guy that got me really going with acrylics. So for him, I owe tons. I love that dude like he's family. Yes. He, yeah. painted the, he painted the coolest painting of me and Abby. Uh, 
and it's like he knows like we love Hawaii you know and like he did like all of our favorite spots in Hawaii and it's like her and I like looking into the North Shore like he like literally like the board shorts he did on me are like smaller than a penny like he got the Ruka (laughs) in there like it's only he can do that you know what I mean or like you like you guys are like your attention to detail is so insane when it comes to that type of stuff that I was like you know notice like seeing what he did and of course mirror before him. Oh yeah. Like, oh my God. I, I was like, I was always into mirror and axis before I, I got even knew all these guys. And I was like, Oh my gosh, there's a level that can be achieved. I need to get there. You know, I need to push myself and it, I, I still can't catch it. I can't, I'll never catch those guys with spray paint. Man. Those guys are just so good. Yeah, but mirror, it, mirror growing up was like, I was, I remember going to like the zero one gallery shows, you know, yep. Aaron and I were like 12 and we'd walk in there and it's like, you know, I, I think the last show was zero one was still on Melrose. Right. Um, and I think Tyke was a part of that show and he did like right. all his letters were like bones of dinosaurs and like, you know, it's I think like, yeah. I'm trying to go to those shows too. I have a question yeah. that I want to bring up in this about, it's it has to do with like I think it was the third legit art show I was in and it was at Green Apple Tree. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd done some freelance for them for Louis. I was sneaking out a Jinko like Axis and Coffee were doing and doing a little wow. freelance. Were you working before you asked that question? Were you when you were at Jinko? Was Yellow still working there? Yeah, it was Yellow Diesel Epic um, uh, Coffee. I sat next to Coffee and Axis. My buddy Bill McAvoy, Ken Bustamante was the art director who's now at Vans doing yeah. Vans work. He was my, by far, he taught me how to use Illustrator and Photoshop. I remember meeting Yellow, because <laughs> I, I, I think I just, it, it, I was still interning for Louis. And, okay. Uh, it's, right, it's right before or after I brought Aaron in, before Aaron took that whole thing over. But that's when I met Yellow, and he was like, I think Yellow was at Gat, and then he went to Jinko. He's like, yeah. you know, uh, it, it, he was super nice dude. Uh, He's a really good dude. He yeah. was he was in VCK and he was in CBS. Yeah. I used to go when the VCKs got in the crew, like drunk and fume, and then it would be me drunk, fume, and explode. We'd go bombing downtown LA at night. And I remember one night we went to the LA Performing Arts Center and snuck into an Emperor and Witchery show, which is um, black metal, whatever. It's like yeah. serious shit, man. <laughs> And they're like, no, 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 just here, let's get these bands. We like tape these wristbands on. We went snuck into the show. And for some reason, Castle was there. He used to drum in a band called Dying Breed or something like that, some death metal band. And they're like, oh, Castle's here. That's cool. And then we went and watched these people sing about eating people, they're <laughs> eating bones out of their drummer's skull or some shit, whatever they're just singing about. And then we went and painted like some train yard down there and like all kinds of stuff. I just, so it's so many good memories of right. these guys. And then for some reason, like, boom, I hate it when, like, I get close to dudes in the crew and then somebody has to kick them out. So it's just, right. yeah, it, it, it sucked. I'd always get close to somebody and then they're gone. And it's like, but I got to work with them at Jinko for a lot of years, which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. What was, uh, you were going to ask a question about Green Apple Tree. So there was an art show they had. I, don't, I was wondering if you were part of it or organizing it. I think it was called apples and oranges i don't remember it was exactly. probably aaron because i went to i moved when i was right after high school which is probably yeah. around 2000 so um if it was around that time i moved to san diego and that's, okay that's when bobby from tribal took me under his wing gotcha i started like i was going to college but all i was doing was painting tunnels over there and <laughs> and that's- realized that college just wasn't the way to go for me at least you know right Right. Yeah, I always stay. The only reason I went to college was to meet my wife because I, right. I, I got through it. I got my degree in studio art, but I goofed off so much and I, I did so much just to go hang out at the beach and go to punk shows and just run around like an idiot. Right. It's good. I, I was going to ask this later, but like now that we're on the conversation that you went to college, like, do you think kids these days, Greg, can just like teach themselves on YouTube? you know, instead of spending all the money and getting like, you know, Matt went to college and you did. And I don't know if you're still in debt. Obviously you're very successful. Like, you know, some kids like Abby, Abby's dad just gifted her last year, paid off her entire, you know, all the money she owed for, for her college. Right. And like, 
she owed like 70 grand and it's been like 15 years since she's been in college or 10, whatever, you know, it's just like, I'm mind blown. You know, I'm so happy that my parents never took a loan out because, right. you know, we never did that. I, I went to Long Beach state. I worked the entire time. I was waiting tables. I've been working since I was 12. I was a janitor for many years. I, you know, worked at a pizza shop. I, I, every, all my money went towards schooling. My parents helped me out with schooling. And like, we weren't wealthy by any means, but we were able to get me and my sister through college. And I have no debt at all from any of that stuff. And which I'm thankful for. But as far as college goes, I feel like I've learned more. Like I said, Axis bring me into, Axis, Nato, and Plek, all three bring me into right. acrylic. And then just getting me a kickstart and then just putting in the time myself, having that interest and that drive push me to want to figure it all out. Like if, if that's the one thing I want to know, I'm going to do whatever I can to educate myself on it. And now with the internet, especially YouTube, you can learn anything. I'm trying, if I'm trying to learn something right now, just type it in. I'm like, yeah. oh, that makes sense. So it's crazy. crazy. It's the online is going to take over. Now that schools are all fucked up because it's, yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, I, we're looking at everything they're going to do for my kids' school starting next year. It's going to be impossible to do any of it, especially with like seven and eight year olds, have them walk in line six feet apart, you know, eat lunch at their desk, like don't interact at PE. I'm like, no, we're going to put them, we're going to find a charter school or something or homeschooling that's going to make sense for them. That's so crazy. The world, I don't know. The world's good. changing, right? It's, Man, it's, it's not, not for the good. I was thought not, the kids had it so made nowadays. Like it had like iPads and they were running around. I was like, man, my mom used to say like, go outside. But now it's like, now right. they can't even play video games. Now they can't even <laughs> communicate with humans anymore. So it's like, Hey, you just play that iPad and stay in your room. It's so sad. It's sad. I make sure to take them out every single day though. We, we go do nature walks or now that the beaches are open, we can go run, mm. throw Frisbee on the beach. Yeah. My learning to surf and, and skimboard and he likes to do that yeah, don't, 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 eight don't, move vegas. don't move to vegas it's like 110 degrees outside oh, man. It's already, yeah. It's already yeah it's it's pretty bad um greg like a lot of uh a lot of the canvases you've painted in the past right a lot of artwork i've seen in you know 10 plus years has like a lot of like uh i feel like there's a lot of uh disney culture inspiration in there like have you ever worked with disney I've done a project with Disney and it was through Les Shetke and it was, it was me, Mir, Slick, Steven, Steven Daly, and, um, uh, someone, one, and, and Les, we redesigned Mickey Mouse in our own style. And it was through the D23 drop at That's Disney. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, everybody had their own version. I did like a, it like a woodcut steamboat Willie, which he was, Mickey Mouse was the actual boat. And then they made all kinds of merch with it. And since my name, my graffiti name is Crayola, I couldn't really put it on there because it's like brand yeah, confusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's another dumb reason I picked that name. Ah, so stupid. Reason <laughs> that but so they put Greg Simpkins on everything. So when I went to downtown Disney, it's like, there's my shirt. And it says Greg Simpkins on it. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I did a painting for it too. And then they just mass merchandised all that stuff and yeah. put it. Does you that, some, oh, sorry. You have some other work though, like, um, I know that you have like a fan in like Nick Cassavetes and he puts a lot of your work in a lot of his movies and you've yeah. also been featured in a lot of other films and TV shows along the way. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I know there's, it's been out there, out there somewhere. I don't have, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Nick so, Cassavetes is, is such a good friend and such a, a good mentor. Like as far as pushing me to paint and paint big, like he commissioned my first large scale acrylic painting and, and, it, which really got me going why am i ever painting small paintings anymore? like i don't i, I still will i'll still paint small paintings i really like going going big, big. with them mm. yeah i like that a lot like I, yeah he really pushed me and then i did a 16 foot one for him right after that one so i think the first yeah. time i ever saw your stuff greg was when you did the cover of newfound glory oh that wasn't me that was that was gunner really i used to, I used to post that all the time dude i used to think that was you and I was no, like, man, his style has totally changed. <laughs> no, that was Gunner, um, the tattoo artist Gunner. Mm. Um, yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. And I probably used to post that picture of his all the time, which may be confused. And I think that's why I, I honestly, I think more yeah. than myself, just think you did that album like cover. Clear with so many people's 
Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, it's funny. No, that was Gunner. Yeah, that's we had, so cool. We used to have combination f- tattoo flash sheets out there in the world. Me, him, and Honky Kong, Adam Hathorn. Honky and Kong's I, great. Dude. Great that, artist. Great yeah, artist. Where's it? I got my Isaac tattoo wow, right here. Wow, yeah. Big Tiger. Yeah, I've been I've known him for years. He's been one of my best buddies and good friends and pushing me this whole I've time. Known, I've known about him for about seven or eight years. Bobby from Tribal is like a huge supporter of his. And uh, yeah. he, he's the one that introduced me to his art. Yeah. That's yeah, he, funny. He's the best. He's hilarious too. I go crash on his couch when I go out there. Well, now he's got a kid and stuff, so I don't get, and I got kids. I don't go out there and crash on his couch much anymore. But back in the day, I used to just go to San Diego, hang out with him, go spray paint a little bit, get tattooed, eat some good food, have some beers. and then, Right. So. Um. Did you had something to do with to die for? Uh, yeah, well, I said those are my my friends Jason and Josh. It's Death from Bashers, so it's yep. basically like a lot of the Bashers guys, and they put me in Bashers when I started working with them. Um, but to die for is Jason Walsh's company, and it used to be called Die Trying. Yep, and it had a lot to do in the hardcore movement and like Warp Tour stuff, and they changed the name to to die for. And I've done I did tons of graphics for them, and I. They're two of my best friends. That's and nice. after To Die For, we were, it was going for a while. They started just pushing my I'm Scared brand because my old website was I'm Scared. And then it just became Simpkins, whatever, my merch. And we still work with them on some merch projects, but not as much. He's working on some other projects right now. But we still get together and have lunches and all that kind of stuff. I love To Die For. Yeah. yeah. What's your... Uh... What drives you these days? You know, because like um, the world's going to change and shift right now. Like, I, I don't know if, if art shows are going to be just on computers. If, you know, like I talk to people at Live Nation all the time. They don't know when, you know, when uh, festivals or shows are coming back, which, right. you know, that's how you make a living. You know, um, I have been seeing a lot of people host like little virtual tours of their shows. But like, right. I love going to shows like any, anything, art shows, regular show, like music shows. Yep. Are, are you, are you tripping at all? You know, you know what? We haven't been tripping out. We've been trying to keep a steady mind during all this stuff. Cause who knows where things are going, but mm-hmm. you know, like as long as I, it's, it's funny, as long as I'm in here painting every day, I don't get nervous. I just keep painting, keep my head in the game. I'm inspired by the stuff that's going on and it's finding its way into my work. And I'm going to, try to talk about it in my way talk about the way the world's changing For sure in my way which is painting these scenes you know and these stories and i'm going to try to keep doing that and pushing forward um people are still buying books people are still buying prints and merch and i'm trying to uh just go in that direction it's going to change our business model for sure um the virtual show thing it doesn't sound that as much fun I, right i'll do it but I want to try to do it in different ways. I want to do it in some ways that nobody else has done it. I think when, so, I, saw, when I saw your piece at Beyond the Streets and got the stand so close to it, I think there's just something about that. You can't, you can't take that away. I mean, through a computer, you, they look beautiful, but firsthand. Oh, yeah, you know, it's the you detail. Get, yeah. the, you the can't. It, but the whole idea of doing those big pieces, because you stand in front of it, you feel like you can walk into it. Mm. Oh, and, yeah. And you were in the room with Ron English, I, I believe. Right. And, and yep. I remember, yeah, I remember, Matt, we yeah. were walking in there and, I, you were like, oh shit, there's, there's Grill. I was That's like, he's the best. Yeah. He's the fucking best. And you turn around and, and it's Ron English and you were like, he's the fucking best. He's the yeah, best. He's, you know? Let's get out of here. Yeah, that was an intimidating room to be in. I just, I always looked up to Ron and, and Slick. Slick, and yeah. I love those guys and they've been so, so good to me ever since. I feel like so welcomed in by all those guys and it's, it's, I always intimidated in those rooms, going to be on the streets and meeting all these guys and, and you know, catching up with old friends. I'm still like, I still feel like a, a goofy little kid that shouldn't be there. I'm not, I shouldn't be allowed to be in the room. And right. it's, it's, it's the, that stupid mentality I have to kick, but I'm just like, oh man, I, I should just go. I should just go paint. Get I think so many people have that. Like, oh yeah. Except they're like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't equal up with these people. It's crazy, yeah. man. I was, I was just talking it, and it's not, it's kind of the same, but it's not, you know, like, growing up you're so like you hear someone's name right and you're like 
that guy is like your idol, like someone like Slick, right? Like yeah. fucking all you think about me growing up is the Hex and Slick battle. You know, right. it's like that was the first time I ever even heard the word battles, like, you know, where I'm in graffiti. And yeah. and then like my uh, this kid I follow the other day was, you know, he was talking shit about people at Supreme. Right. And like okay. and Stussy because they're too cool. They're like they're the coolest of the cool. And I. I don't think that those guys think they're cool. I think that sure kids at their shop that work there are probably like, they got that like mentality of like, yeah, we're fucking too cool. But, uh, but Supreme or Stussy wouldn't stand for what they are. If those kids didn't give you that little butterfly feeling when you walk in of just being scared and intimidated. And I brought up a whole thing from when we grew up going into your local skate shop you know, and like the guys working there, they were like legends. Cause like back in the day when you would walk into a skate shop, any kid that was working at a skate shop was very good at skating. Like you were a part of that team of that shop. And those guys goes all the way back to the the Zephyr team, you know, of like of that shop. And I was like, bro, it's the same thing when we walked into Ig board shop where we grew up in Agora Hills and running into Seamus and Bert, who were like the guys that work there, you know, and like you get to know them as you grow up and you're like, those dudes are just regular ass dudes, you know? And, yeah. and then, you know, growing up, I meet Crayola or yeah. Access or Revoke, you know, or Eclipse ends up raising me from the age of 16 all the way till today, pretty much, where it's like, you don't know the kind of, you just, you're intimidated because you look at the world of graffiti or the world of, you know of skate skateboards or bmxers or whatever. it's just funny oh yeah i do it all the time with you i'll be like so and so you're like oh yeah i know that guy I yeah. call, i'll call him right now I'm like <laughs> what <laughs> no way but you know to, to, to totally pivot and we're talking about prince and like what the next movement is I, i've seen you do a figurine before it's like more figurines in the works and like do you yeah. like doing those is that something that worked out for you was that like uh you know yeah the like process behind that the, the toys and all that kind of stuff and the figures are I don't, it's always fun to have like a bunch of plates spinning. So like I, I got hit up by Sideshow Collectibles and I've always looked up to them and they have a, a sub brand called Unruly and they've been working on my Starry Night characters. Yes. And we have a new Stabby coming out that looks exactly like the putting the bunny ears up Stabby, yeah. which I'm really stoked on that one. It's about to come out. So I, I always want to keep that kind of stuff in the works, you know, and, yes. and keep it going. Keep yes. these. I just Carriage. want like a little Greg painting because oh yeah a little, a little one like a little fish <laughs> little, Narnia, little Narnia subject I can't wait you know what's it uh what's it like being a family man Greg how long have you and your wife been together oh gosh like 21 years wow that's so cool we met in 97 and I remember I was out painting with Atlas and oh my god like, I haven't seen him forever by the way great guy yeah the best I saw him last year we painted around this time um and we painted a wall up by, by him and Vernon. He, uh, uh, he said, oh, great. You got the kryptonite to graffiti. Good. We're never going to see you again. I'm like, no, I'm still around. So that, <laughs> there's just walls and, and every spot had a little heart and gem on it underneath every single piece. So like Compton Riverbed, little heart gem, you know, underneath every single <laughs> hit up every time I, I did a piece with those guys. But yeah, we've been together for a long time. That's it's awesome. been and it still feels new, and it, like I, I got super lucky and blessed with her. Like, is she an artist also, or she... no, the opposite. <laughs> Total opposite. See, that's she's a business so well. person. Yeah, she's very business minded. Just oh. organized. Um, she was in business and marketing when she through college, you know, through college, and when she left, she was working in the makeup companies, and then like behind the scenes for makeup companies, and then she was working for a healthcare company and doing all the ads and, and marketing for that. And then we were able to pivot once my gallery career took off and just, she's able to just manage me full time. But she, it was her and her boss when I was still working in video games. They're the ones that said, you know, you should uh, try to do this full time because the galleries are hitting you up and they think you could do it. Let's set a plan in, in action and we'll make it happen. So if, if she wouldn't have set that plan, how we were going to do things and save our money, we wouldn't be, I would, I'd still be sitting behind a computer eating Cheetos, getting super fat. So <laughs> you mentioned video games. Uh, 
I, I think I read somewhere that you got to work on the Tony Hawk video game or that you yep. helped with the Tony Hawk game. And so then since we're doing a reboot, are you any part of the reboot? Can you let us know about that? Is that oh, gosh, you know, I wish any I was, of your stuff in there? I wish I was a part of the yeah. reboot. Dude, I, I did. I worked on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. That's when the Xbox. Ooh. And that was a combination of one and two and then five extra levels that we made. Oh. And my job was as a texture artist, which I was, they give you the wire frame of the world and you make it look like this basically i remember doing redoing the venice pit um, level and putting graffiti right back on it where we had painted it and like i would use actual photos and have everybody send me flicks Wasn't and i was exp some express stuff in there yep but yeah. i don't know if we put that one in the game yeah. though we put other pieces in there but there's a wall there's a, a cooker that me and axis painted where it has the drunk with power character on the the tower and it says axis creole i put that yeah. right back where it yes. was and oh man like, that that's basically if you play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X, it's like my photo album of, of my crews and like whatever. That's so cool. They better keep I, it in there. We we did um a big rest in peace stuff for Nace because Nace passed yep. away during yep. that, and he had he had sent me a, a big stack of flicks. I still have. Oh, I might have gave him the bleak actually, but it was I, it was such a bummer, man, when he passed. So we mm -hmm. I just made sure and put some really good Nace spots. I think it's in the school level, but. I, yeah, I worked on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X, and then I worked on Kelly Slater Pro Surfer, and then I worked on Sean Palmer Pro Snowboarder 2, yeah. which I worked on for like two and a half years, and they canned it because SSX Tricky came out with EA, and our game was better too, by far. I played that thing. I was, uh, this game was going to kick ass, and they totally canned it, which sucked. And everybody's getting laid off, and it was kind of scary. And all of a sudden, Spider Man upstairs, like, Hey, you want to come upstairs and work on Spider-Man? I'm like, hell yes, I do. And wow. I on Spider-Man for like three years, three different games. And my first two months, I just had to sit and, and, and read Spider-Man comics to, to know the, the storyline. I'm like, okay, this doesn't oh, wow. suck. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. That, it was fun working there. Yellow worked there also. Really? Yellow back. Like, it was because of all my Jinko connections. They all quit because Jinko sucked. That place was just <laughs> horrible. And they all – a lot of those guys got hired at – at Treyarch, which was part of Activision, and I just kept bugging them, sending them my portfolio, and trying to get lunches with my buddies. I'm like, "Come on, dude, you gotta get me in. You gotta get me in here. I can't stand working at Jinko anymore. It's just sucked." Wow. And I got to sit down with the boss, and he looked through my portfolio, and he's like, "And I had all my graffiti at the end." He's like, "This is exactly what we need. I love your computer work. I love your art, but I need somebody who understands graffiti because so far it's not been placed right." in the game and i know how to place it and where it would be naturally and so i did that that was part of my job was putting graffiti in the game too i want to talk about because i know like kids listening now or they're not gonna have any idea who the fuck jinko is uh, i, I want to so i cool. i need some stories greg like Dude. why was it bad uh, let's tell people what jinko was and i'm happy to just jump in there I as used well to trace <laughs> a little, there was a zebra character as a kid i remember i used to just trace over and over and over it was like this hip hop <laughs> zebra <laughs> I can, really man, those, those they just they wanted to be gat and everything else right. out there echo so bad that but they were okay jinko jeans were famous for these giant raver pants that looked like you could fit a village of this children. whole elbow like, by the way everyone just yeah, so you could the width. Just, the width i could fit this entire part of my arm it, like that's how big it was and it wow. wasn't baggy it was big no, bell bottom <laughs> yeah. right and uh, am i even allowed to talk like this about a company like oh, yeah. i don't okay is I, okay. company? I should be say I was lucky to get a job right out of college and be happy. It was after the whole gigantic pant phase too when right. I came in. I got a phone call. I was graduating college. I was working at Chili's going, oh man, I got I to gotta figure out how to get some work. I'm interviewing around and my buddy Epic called and said, hey, they're looking for illustrators over here. I put your name in the hat. You want to come interview? I'm like, yeah, I need a job. And so I drove to downtown LA off. Um, Santa Fe and yep. is it eighth or seventh or yeah, whatever? Across the street from Louis, across the street, more like the road that from uh from Gap. Yeah, I was right there, and I went in. I interviewed, got the job, and the owner had no idea about any kind of the seat. It was like it was we're in fine suits, and his, they owned a a textile company, and they did pretty well at the textile company. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna knock them, but they didn't understand the culture, and a lot of the times they me and the guys would come in with our ideas like coffee would have some sick sick ideas 
And he'd say, no, I want it more like this stuff. And he just point to like an echo thing, right? I was such a, a buzzkill yeah. you know, with ideas. And he's like, no, no, let's do it more like these guys over here. And it's like, you're wasting, you have access. And you, had leader, you had leaders working yeah, you for you and know. you're just like, nah, I want. And w meanwhile, Mark Echo is probably looking at your guys' graffiti and he's like, let's make my stuff look like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one thing I have to say was awesome about that though, with the year and a half I was there, I got to sit with those guys every single day, grow close connections with them and then the art directors and stuff who went on to work at Dan's and hired me to right. do stuff and stuff later on. It just became good connections. Everybody I've worked with, was awesome so i can't really knock it too much the company as itself it's not like something i'd be proud to yeah i, I wore jinko i wouldn't wear it but right. the, the, the people and the experience of being there going to trade shows getting you know flown out to vegas to go to magic and yeah. having crazy parties and not knowing how i woke up or you know <laughs> what, what, what just happened like i'm blinking through places <laughs> jody Watley singing over here i'm like jody Watley, what the hell that's the boss from the past. And like, I barely remember the trade shows, but oh, they were fun. Like, I, I can't knock it, but as a brand, I, I wasn't into it. So it's not like I could say, yeah, I was part of this really cool brand. <laughs> it's like, man. So, so you kind of learned on the fly at that job and kind of cut your teeth and doing graphics and learning how to vector at this. Was it the same thing when you got into like game art too? Did you, did you learn? Yeah. How to just do that? So I was able to take, Oh, let's go before um, that. I learned how to do computers through making slap tags. So like, oh, I was okay. like, oh, my dad had a scanner. My buddy gave me a pirate version of Photoshop. I'm like, I got to figure this out. And so I remember scanning in a hello, my name is sticker, blowing it up to eight and a half by 11, and then taking a Crayola crayon box, the 64 box, scanning that in, and then figuring out how to place it on the hello, my name is sticker and swap out the the logo on it and put a CBS eyeball on it and put these two devils on each side that I drew and print it out. And I started slapping those up everywhere. And it oh, took me wow. forever to figure out, but I, I started my, my computer graphics journey just through graffiti. Also, everything started with graffiti. graffiti helped everything. Like it made me want to, you know, figure out how to use Photoshop. And then from that, like I need to use illustrator. And then right then that remember that brand serial killer, Oh my God. Yes. I loved it. And you could pretty much only get it on Melrose. <laughs> right. So that, the guy's office was in El Segundo, which was close to me. And I was friends with like the guys who worked there and they're like, Hey, can you do some designs for us? I'm like, sure. I can do anything. I'm like, Oh shit. I got to figure this out. <laughs> I did this nautical star with flames on it in a circle and said serial killer. And it took me ages to make a nautical star. And then my buddy he came over and he said, Oh, do text, type option O or whatever, and there's an optical star. And I was like, you got to be kidding. But I figured out how to use points and all that kind of stuff because of it. And then that helped me get the job at Genco because I knew a little bit of computer, but those guys really taught me. Yeah. And that helped me in video games. And from there, those guys trained the hell out of me. I learned the 3D, like 3D Studio Max, tiny bit of ZBrush towards the way out. And, but it was just Photoshop, Illustrator, and 3D Studio Max. Wow. And I can do back of my hand front left sideways photoshop and illustrator I was trying to uh you know sometimes i wake up like on mondays and i'm trying to like download a bunch of old photos so kids can like learn you know the the culture and the past and i went on like this jinko hole the other day and i couldn't find anything cool you know really like, i like i found i found ads but i feel like they were new because i know jinko is trying to make a comeback right now because uh, i've seen them at not really? Not Agenda, the, the other show that Aaron teamed up with in Vegas. Uh, and it just, I was like, oh my God, Aaron's like, yeah, they're trying to make a comeback. And I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. This is so bad. But like, I couldn't find anything. But like, I forgot about Serial Killer until you said something. I used to love seeing Serial Killer because they would just, they would literally use Samuel L. Jackson, John Travolta on a t-shirt, you know, uh, the scene from uh, Pulp Fiction, them shooting someone would just be like Serial Killer or like, you know, and yeah. I was like, that's the kind of shit. That's the, that's the cool shit. I always wore the train spotting one. Oh, I got yes. it. And it said heroin on it. it. <laughs> and it said heroin. And my mom would just flip out. Everybody would be pissed. I, I, I was in a little <laughs> punk band at the time. And I'd wear it. And we played a Sweet 16 party. And I had this is black, black hair and shirt said heroin on it. with this, And there's a bunch of little kids and girls and stuff. I'm like, oh, we're going to get kicked out. 
it, dude, but that's how it used to be. There'd be so much there. Even skate companies used to make such cool shirts, man. And like, you know, for people like think or world industries, girl and chocolate used to have really good graphics for skating. Just used to be right. now or people just PC don't even care. Too, There's like no money in any of that. So no, there is. That's, that's it, the way people it, think. I think it was like cool to remember like the shirt that you couldn't wear to school. That made it like so much. Oh cooler. yeah. Like, that was like, right. Cool. <laughs> you couldn't wear it to school, then it was the best shirt. And then growing up, like, I think I started seeing, like, all the Fink skateboard stuff. And I used to just be like, man, the Giant do that tag? Like, you know, you start looking at stuff, and I'm like, oh, like the T. Yeah, and I was like, who did that tag? And then, like, they had one with, like, flames on it. And I'm like, this is, you just start thinking graffiti, everything. Like, anything you saw, right. you're like, this was graffiti. Right. How sick is Mike Giant, too? That guy was yeah. one of my those like first picking up like what what are the mag 12 ounce profit or something from tower records just going and grabbing graffiti mags and like oh twist and mike giant oh my god it was funny because i started uh i started following that like there was a fake barry mcgee account it went away because i feel like barry said something because oh, barry yeah, doesn't yeah. have it because for like two weeks it was like posting crazy shit and i was like oh fuck yeah. and then that it was just him. disappeared it's gone it, it was like i thought disappeared. that was him yeah no it's gone Cause you know, like cause everyone started posting about it. Cause I was like, dude, this is the Godfather. And, like he's posting, and no, it wasn't. Showing the catalog, you know. But like growing up, like obviously Barry, you know, who you know, for you kids out there, that's Twist, and right. you know, even someone like Felon, you know, growing right. up, you know, like that kind of sick too. And I was just talking to Roger about him the other day, and Roger's like, yeah, man, it's like he just. I'm like, he could have been on Barry's level too, you right? Know? throw ups in that little bad character he had yep. um yep. and then like you know i grew up on like all msk awr guys because where i grew up the original guys are from there you know like the chunks of the world and you know yeah. and bus and all those guys and right uh, and then obviously casey taught me like everything graffiti you know and then revoke came into my life and but like you know, people are like always like, man, you're friends with those dudes. I'm like, that's like more than friends. It's like that's my family. You know? Yeah, that's right. The only thing missing from us is blood, you know. Uh, but it's really cool. I mean, graffiti has come such a long way, right? Like it's right. way different. I mean, Greg, when you started, like the the think about how much easier it is like to paint now. Your fingers oh. don't get tired. You could paint all day. Like people, like graffiti guys are designing the can now. It's right different world and it's like when you see someone like a tyke take over you know seventh letters account and kids yeah. don't get it they're like eh. and you're like bro you have no idea he, he created that style yeah. <laughs> dude he's like he was so young when he started too yeah. i like rip out when he shows me pictures when he was a kid i'm like dude and you were sick back then I'm like that whole him character and, him and crush just like yeah. you're like oh my god you know <laughs> Yeah, that dude, Tyke is awesome. I love that guy. Like, we have them over for Christmas walks, like his the family. He's his best. little girls are so cute. Like, I, I guess we're, we're at, they do a surprise party for me at Dabs and Milas. And Tyke and Paloma brought their, their little girls, and they're out with the boys. And she comes over, she's like, okay, one of them are going to marry the other. They have to. So <laughs> yes. we're trying to get our kids Arrange to get this. married. So yeah. That's Arrange amazing. Marriage um trying to think what else we got for you over here i have one question yeah i, I yeah. try to ask it to all the guests you know in honor of uh james lipton passing away I, I, and i call myself the curse so i always would like to know what your favorite curse word is oh my favorite curse word yeah um i, I probably it probably shouldn't be fuck or anything like that but it probably is oh, no, that's totally <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the first no. word that comes to your head but i I got to watch my mouth, especially around these kids, because they start saying everything. Yeah. Is it hard being a dad, Greg? Yes. It's very hard. Abby and I, like, it's just, you know, like, people are always like, when are you going to have babies? You know, how old are you, tall? And I'm like, fuck, man. I already, I was always like, man, like, my parents were pretty young. You know, my dad was my best friend. And it's like, I don't want to be an old dad. Right. It's like one thing that hangs over me. It's like, oh, things are different now. I'm like, yeah, but I'm going to be 39 and Abby's still not pregnant. So I'm kind of tripping. Well, don't trip. I, I mean, I, when I say it's hard, it means any, everything, anything worth doing is hard. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's definitely got its challenges, but the benefits outweigh the challenges. I mean, we, we get into some pretty big fights, especially with my oldest son, but he's such a, a, 
a wild charismatic kid has so much positive things to that too like he can like he's getting really good at skateboarding he and like anywhere he goes people are a magnet to him they want to be around isaac they everybody loves him he's such a great kid we set the channel's energy a bit but that energy is going to take him all over the world one day i think i look at him like wow you're that kid i never was i was like such a dork i'm like you're so cool dude i wish i was i was you as a kid but it, it, it's fun to watch them grow up it's fun to watch their stages like my little guy seven and he's doing sixth grade math right now because of this quarantine he we got him a tutor and she's just like no he needs to be doing wow. sixth grade doing algebra right now and i'm like what the hell it's really fun to watch and I, I'm, I'm so proud of them and and i'm so i sometimes i come down on myself am i, am I being too hard on them i i, I don't know and yeah. then am i going too easy on them but one thing i do know is i get to spend time with them every day i That's take my so old cool. eight parks and you know, and back before all this quarantine stuff, we were able to go down to Harbor City Skate Park, which is just down the street, and day one songs there all the time. So he gets to sit and watch and grow up oh, amongst God. some of the My favorite skateboard. account to follow. Wow. Yeah, same. And it's just like so cool. I'm like, you know, we're skating next to you right there. Just pay attention. And he always gives Isaac a pat on the back and a high Sick. five. And I just getting his little circles. Sorry, I start talking dad stuff. That's way easier for me to talk about than art stuff because I love I have, it. No, it's cool. I love it because you're such a dad. We need to transition. I am. And I love sucked. it. I never thought I would be a dad, dad, but it's, yeah. It's, Do you find yourself only hanging out um, with people that have kids, Greg? Yes. It gets tough because I want to go out and hang out with people without right. kids. But then what are we going to do with the kids? Is Jen's parents going to watch them? My parents are in Washington now, so they can't. It's like, okay, we got to figure this out. And some of my best friends have kids exact same ages as my kids. It makes it easy. Yeah. So, yeah, so we the kids get together. We take them to the beach. They can do whatever they want: surf, skate, skimboard, whatever. We're gonna hang out, and there's just we've got a good group of parent friends right now, which I'm pretty stoked about. That we can travel with and do stuff with them and bring the kids. I love it. But, but it's when the kids start not getting along. It's like, oh, now they're fighting. <laughs> that I don't up. Hang out with that kid again, Dad. Or did Isaac punch somebody or what did he do? Or it's just, it's crazy. Um, but, I, I'll have, I have one more question for you, Greg, um, right. which is kind of like the thing that we're going to be asking everyone uh, on our second season is what, um, what do you define or look like at the word success? Like what does success mean to you? Gosh, that's a really tough one. Um, for me, I, like, the only part that I really feel successful is that my family is fed. They have a roof over their head and the, the cream at the whipped cream on the top of that, yeah. that dessert is that I get to paint and do something I love all day, every single day. It's like, I mean, I, I just be happy to make sure that they're fed and safe and secure, but to be able to do what I like more than anything on the planet, all day and, and get lost in that world all day is just something I never would have dreamed I was able to do. Wow. I, I gotta, I gotta be thankful for that because it's like, I can't imagine doing anything else. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Would, would you say, and that was my last question, but this is my last question before my last question after that. Right. Would you, was your first headlining show on your own? Do you remember the year of that? Like when your first solo show was? My first solo show was at Gallery 1988 and had to have been 14 years ago. Because before that, I did uh, some two men shows, yep. like Coffee, uh, yep. Upper Playground, and with my buddy Joe Ledbetter the year before that at, at Gallery 1988. And then I've done that <laughs> Green Apple show. Right, you. right. Would, would you I, but the first one was probably about 14 or 15 years ago at Gallery 1988. Jensen Carp, Katie Cromwell. Best Jensen. I love Jensen so much. I love Jensen. Broke me into this whole scene. So along would with, you, would you I, say that, uh, was your first, in your first show, did you say like, I'm going to do this? This is like, you know what I mean? Because some people have a show, they don't sell a thing. And like, oh, I guess that's another, that, that's how it goes into like my success story of like, you know, you look at it and you're like, fuck, I didn't sell like, anything or did I do this. good or am I going to do good? I'll tell you who told me that, like our first meeting with Jensen, um, it was for the group show for I Am 8-Bit, and I did this Pac-Man and Hospice piece, and it was just a big group show, and he sat me down, he's like, 
you can do this for a living. I'm like, no, I can't. It's impossible. I go, I was going to all these art shows and yeah. it's so amazing to be like Mark Ryan or Todd Shore. I mean, look at what these guys are doing. Gary Baseman, Tim Biscup. And I was like, damn, these guys are amazing. And then Jensen's like, there's no reason you can't do this. And I was like, I don't know. And then that very first solo show, him and Katie, they brought me into the back. There's a line wrapped around the front wow. all the way to the rows. And he's like, I'm like, so how's everything, you know? And I remember that day I was so nervous. I went and sat and watched Borat by myself. <laughs> and I got to the gallery, my stomach's all nervous. And like, well, I didn't do so good, you know, but who knows? There, usually sales will happen at night. So I'm like, okay. And I walk in and they're just looking at me and I'm just all nervous thinking, okay, I hope some stuff sells, you know? And I look at the wall and there's a red dot in every single piece. And there's like maybe 35 to 40 pieces and everything had sold out. And the doors didn't even open. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Best feeling they, ever. And scared never, for your life. <laughs> it's like a big deep breath. <sighs> oh, yeah. And after that, I just, I've been have, doing solos ever since. And That's amazing. Greg. It makes me sad to not be able I wasn't going to do one this year anyways. Right. We had, we're going to space it out anyways. Yeah. And so people kept saying, oh, you had to cancel your May show. I'm like, no, we weren't going to do it this year with Mary. Like, we were planning some other stuff. Mary's still having a group show in August, which I'm looking forward to, you know, displaying some in that. And I'm super stoked on Mary Kanowski and KP projects there. They've been just awesome. Um, but yeah, it's, it's real funny. Jensen's the one who told me you can do this. That's so and awesome, man. Yeah. I owe him a lot too. There's so many great people. Yeah. Along it, and, and I know we've already like said we were done, but like there's just so many artists out there that don't get a chance you know, um, I, I'm friends with some of them, you know, that they're, they're so fucking talented, like so yep. talented. And sometimes it, it, it's like a, it's like being an artist is like being a rock star or a rapper, you know, it's like you have that full package, Greg. And, uh, and a lot of people just, they don't, they don't just have the, sometimes they just don't have the package and it, it sucks, but I, I want kids to keep driving because it, right. it's a lot easier these days than kids actually think to, to actually get a real chance out there. Oh, so much easier. Like my number one thing, when people ask me, how do you do this? I'm like, it, it's all going to go back to paint every day, draw every day, push yourself every day, and then get it in front of the, as many eyeballs as possible. Who cares what they think? Yeah. And the internet is so much easier. Like just get it in front of people's eyeballs. Yeah. Like who cares about their opinions? If it's, you know, just work hard on it and put it out there. A lot of people like to keep it to themselves. Like they're so precious with it. Like, oh, this is my artwork. I'm not showing it to anybody. It's like, you're hurting yourself. Show you're some hurting yourself. And maybe that's what's being a graph writer too, because you're out there trying to put your name up and bigger and better than yeah, you did the me. previous time. And that pushes you. I think that just folded over into me like having my first MySpace account and going, right. how many eyeballs are gonna see this this weird little drawing I just did? Oh fuck it, post. Yeah. See what happens. Now and just no Instagram is like it's crazy. We're we're uh we got a girl we're we're zooming with tomorrow. Her name is uh, Sarah Fryer. She uh -huh. wrote a she wrote a book called No Filter. It just came out. It's the Instagram story. It's really oh, cool. good, Greg. You should you should listen to it. It's like I'm I've never been more excited to like interview someone because like she got nice. a all access pass to interview everyone. It's really, really cool. Yeah, it's really that's cool. really cool. I have to listen to that for sure. Instagram has really helped our business a lot. Like, I'm sure. You have Crazy. a massive following, you know, and I've watched, and we've watched it grow for, you know, for a long time. So but, YouTube's uh, really good too. I heard you guys are on YouTube now. I yeah. We just, we just oh, yeah, started it too. and Matt, you know, Matt teaches me so much <laughs> and he's like, yo, YouTube is, is where it's at, you know, and it's um, working for us. I'd surprisingly like right when this um, quarantine started, like my YouTube numbers jumped through the roof and just book sales. I've been having to go. Wow. I was like, through YouTube? I didn't really think it would do anything. So I just doubling down on YouTube also right now. I'm so. just in everything. Like I told Matt, I'm like, we just got to just like, just keep, keep it going. Keep like just away. pumping, pumping, yeah. pumping. And you it's know, eyeballs. It's eyeballs. So where can they yeah. find you, Greg? Um, oh yeah. Well, where can we on, find you? On Instagram, it's at Crayola, C-R-A-O-L-A. On YouTube, it's Crayola280 because I think I started an account and, and, <laughs> botched up years ago yep so it's crayola 280 the number is 280 and then facebook whatever you can find me there everywhere is pretty much crayola crayola 280 i and haven't then, wrapped up tiktok but i got one and it's it, weird. Dude, 
Wait, it's so, it's so weird. <laughs> yes. I just keep posting and I don't understand okay. it. Thanks, man. Greg, thank you so much, Appreciate man. It, Honestly. Thanks for taking the time, yeah. man. Thank you. I'm yeah. honored to be on it. This is you're, awesome. You can man. do it every Monday on my walk. So I love it. You're, you're the best. All thank right. you so much, Greg. Have a good weekend, man. You, you too, it. guys. Bye, right, brother. Thanks, All man. Right. See ya. Bad news.